Hello, all you flight simmers out there. Commander Kingfish here, and I am back in Microsoft Flight Simulator, and we are doing the Bush Trip Interstate 5. Uh, we are on uh, part one. Uh, we are getting ready for today to do uh, leg number two, uh, which is Payne Field to Gray's Air Force Base. Uh, part one consists of flying from Blaine all the way down to Kelso. Uh, and then from there, part two will take over uh, through Oregon. So without much further ado, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started here. So let's click on Interstate 5. And that's going to take us right to here. Uh, you might see that I've already flown it. That's because my mute was on. So uh, I'm flying it again. All right. So we're going to restart, uh, actually. So there will be a, probably a little bit of uh, uh, narration once uh, I get into it. But uh, once uh, we get there, I'll catch back up with you. In this first part, we will fly over Washington State with its major cities such as Seattle, Tacoma, and Olympia, and national parks. The route is very simple. You only have to follow the course of I-5, which is always clearly visible from above. In any case, you can follow the route via the GPS of your new Cessna Grand Caravan painted in perfect flight colors. Enjoy your flight. Okay, so let me go ahead and uh, actually minimize this. Uh, let's get our altitude set. Uh, we want to fly at uh, 2,000 feet. There we go, that's set. And let's get our rate of ascent, our vertical ascent. Uh, set that at 500 and let's hit our navigation so that we've got GPS now we're facing north so we're going to have to swing around and start getting back on track so I think we are about ready to take off and of course it's going to tell me that uh, my brake is on and I know because I like to do a run up so let's go ahead and do the run up and yep I know all right so let's take off started with one flap down I can't remember but uh, all right let's get up in the air here and as soon as we get turned around I'll turn on the autopilot looks like a cloudy day at least it's not raining like it was when we landed here at Payne Field and Getting turned around here over Payne Field. And there we go. All right. Let's hit our navigation. Let's see if this is going to get us on track and there we go all right probably going to do a narration here pretty quick yep yep I know but I happen to know where I'm flying on this particular push trip so uh, should make it fairly easy 
and we are almost up to 2,000 feet. Let's get our flaps up. That should be all the flaps. And we are gaining speed. All right, I'm going to minimize that. Take off head south. Located in Snohomish County, Mount Lake Terrace is known for its suburban feel-diverse community and access to outdoor activities such as hiking and fishing. The city is situated near major highways making commuting to adjacent cities such as Seattle and Everett relatively easy. Mount Lake Terrace has a thriving business community with several retail and restaurant options available to residents and visitors. Okay, so that's Mount Lake Terrace. Let's hop outside, which uh, is kind of, uh, we just left Everett. Mount, uh, Mount Lake Terrace is right about in this area right here, in between Everett and Seattle. So let's hop outside and you can just kind of enjoy the flight. Okay, she was talking about Green Lake. That's right there coming up. And so when we get a little bit closer to downtown Seattle, I'll do a little bit of pointing out of stuff that I know. Okay, here is Green Lake. This lake right here is Lake Union, and the Ballard Locks are right in off of this lake here, uh, which I believe it comes out through here. Uh, it's a waterway that goes out to Puget Sound. Uh, this is Lake Washington over here. Uh, the hydroplane races are ran uh, in between these two bridges. This is I-90 bridge going across Lake Washington, and I can't remember what bridge this is but uh, the hydros are uh, raced right in through there this is downtown Seattle coming up and uh, you'll see that this is the Fremont district right in here this bridge right here is the Fremont bridge and again that's where uh, it goes out to the uh, Ballard locks I'm not sure what this is here I just uh, don't know uh, up here on the right is the Space Needle. As we get a little closer, you'll see it. The tallest building here in Seattle, I believe, is still the Columbia Tower, which was built many, many years ago. There's the Space Needle right there. And just as we get past over here, now she's going to start another narration, but uh, the... Uh, uh, Two stadiums are on the south side of the city, and the University of Washington should be campus, I believe should be up and in this area right here. And I may have missed Husky Stadium, but it should have been right 
up and in here someplace as well. Now, the two stadiums are right here. The journey continues in the direction of Tacoma, a mid-sized city located on the Puget Sound. The city is known for its museums, parks, and outdoor recreation. One of Tacoma's most popular attractions is the Museum of Glass, which showcases contemporary glass art and has a hot shop where visitors can watch glass blowing demonstrations. Point Defiance Park is another popular destination, featuring gardens, beaches, hiking trails, and a zoo and aquarium. Tacoma has a rich history with Native American communities inhabiting the area for thousands of years before European settlement. Well, I hope you got all that. I hope you saw the two stadiums. We flew over the stadiums. Uh, this is Boeing Field right here. And that's where uh, Boeing uh, has uh, will stage their jets or their uh, airliners once they are produced out of the Everett factory. Then you will see them along right here. Uh, as you're driving along the freeway, you You'll see them parked along here. Uh, that is SeaTac uh, right there. Uh, and it's uh, one of the larger, obviously, uh, here in the Pacific Northwest, the largest uh, airport uh, going in and out of. And so uh, it looks like we've got a little bit of fog up here. But other than that, it looks like the weather might be breaking up a little bit. Hopefully, uh, it's not going to deter us too much. It seems like the weather's a little bit different each time we come through here. Now, she talked about uh, Tacoma a little bit earlier before we were even close to Tacoma. I'll point it out once we get down there. Chasing stars and holding you. I can't see the end, but we'll see it through. are starting to approach Tacoma which she was talking about one thing I will point out before I bring down the nav lock is over in this direction are the Olympics uh, really uh, beautiful uh, mountains it's just a, a patch there on the peninsula that uh, uh, has a lot of beautiful hiking trails and whatnot now I don't know should be able to see it right down in there and uh, as we get a little closer you'll be able to see it but that's the uh, Tacoma Narrows Bridge and if you remember the old newsreels and whatnot the black and whites of the suspension bridge that's waving up and down and then crashes well that was called Galloping Gertie and that was where the old bridge uh, fell into uh, the Tacoma Narrows there so look it up you'll see it uh, on some newsreels this is the port of Tacoma, where she was talking about uh, all of the museums and parks. Uh, one of them that I've been to many, many years ago was Point Defiance Park, which uh, has its uh, uh, beaches and gardens and hiking trails and a zoo along with the aquarium. So as a kid, it was always fun to kind of go to Point Defiance Park. And yep, this is uh, this is the port of Tacoma, and so this whole area right here is uh, Tacoma. And back off over and in this direction is Federal Way. After you get back up over the hill, uh, an area I used to live in for a couple of years. The other thing that uh, I'll point out as we get down here a little bit closer is uh, the old Tacoma Dome, and at least wise here uh, they are still showing it that it's still standing I didn't know if it was still standing 
but it was just a uh, sports complex it was built way back in the uh, uh, 70s and 80s uh, that uh, housed uh, different uh, local uh, sporting events and stuff like that you can kind of see it right there we will pass just about right over it so the next aeration point that she will be coming up with is Gray Air Force Base and I see they've got a uh, typo right here they say Frave that should be Gray uh, as we uh, approach and, and actually that's Gray right there so that's what we're going to be heading for and there it is right there that's the Tacoma Dome so I will uh, let you kick back and enjoy the flight And there's a uh, picture of it. Uh, now we should, uh, we're going to be, I think, coming in from this direction and landing along here. So I guess it's about time. Well, we'll go a little bit farther here. And uh, you can see we're following I-5. Uh, this is going to come down through here. And this actually is uh, uh, McCord Air Force Base and Fort Lewis so it's a joint operation so you uh, I did not realize that they had a, a second uh, base down there that uh, was Gray Air Force Base so this is McCord right here <clears throat> and then uh, Fort Lewis uh, all of that is housed right up in here so I'm gonna go back inside and it's gonna be time to start getting this thing ready we're going to be coming in right through here, down through here. So let me uh, start backing off on this. Let's uh, turn this off and this and that. I now have full control. And let's swing around over here. Now, what you're looking at straight ahead is uh, the Nisqually Valley and the Nisqually River. It has salmon and steelhead runs that, that come up through here. And it's a, a marsh and wetlands that's been preserved. So a lot of wildlife viewing and stuff like that out in this area. All right, let's start slowing this thing down a little bit. set a flap okay we should be able to start swinging around here should see our uh, landing strip coming up. There it is.
Okay, let's finish swinging around. thing they do have us coming in so far has been other than taking off uh, we have at least nice long runways to land on of course the 208 doesn't necessarily need uh, that much you can land in a pretty tight uh, air airfield airstrip on that with this plane enough coming in I can see all white lights across so let's start uh, backing off on the throttle a little bit down here at the end well the last flight uh, I actually uh, landed uh, and was able to take uh, and get stopped before we got to the first one so we will swing around here and get off the active runway here I could probably just stop on the runway and it would end the uh, scenario right here but Let's at least get off the runway. Boy, this one doesn't turn very sharp compared to the others that I've been on. All right, now that we're off the runway, let's go ahead and get this thing stopped right here. There we go. And there we go. We've completed the leg in 26 minutes. And let's uh, go to our stats. So 23 minutes of flight time uh, from uh, Payne Field to Gray Air Force Base. All right, all you flight simmers out there, if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. It really helps the video out a lot. And please subscribe. It'll really help the channel. Um, ring that bell. I'm always uploading new videos uh, on a weekly basis, and it'll let you know when I have new videos out there to watch. Okay, all you flight simmers out there, keep those smooth landings coming. And with that, Commander Kingfish is out of here, and I will see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone. <laughs>